because the sun is sitting a lot lower now in the morning, the light was so beautiful and there was a really nice mist just like hovering over the lake this morning, it was so nice. Um, anyway, I listened to a podcast on my run and I don't usually listen to podcasts but I'm a little bit tired of my running playlist, I need to update it and I haven't had the time to do it just yet. So I decided to listen to uh, Africa Brooks' uh, latest episode of Beyond the Self. The specific episode was how to focus on what you can control. This series of Africa's podcast has all been centred around identity and it's, it's incredible. Um, this particular episode was great. There was a, it was a lot for a Saturday morning, um, but it was all really good. There's lots of food for thought. I think it's an episode that I will definitely listen to again. So I can uh, take some notes because I found myself stopping rewinding the podcast just so I can try and take some of it in. So it's definitely going to be one I re-listen to. Um, but the whole series in general of Beyond the Self has been really interesting because it's all centred around identity. And I found over the past maybe like three to four months, I, well maybe actually since the beginning of the year, I've struggled with my identity and I've struggled with the shift in my identity and how to discuss that and um, self-censorship I guess surrounding the talking about my identity and kind of changing I guess beliefs and views and things like that um, and listening to Africa has been really interesting she's such a fascinating woman and she the things that she discusses I, she, just, she talks with so much nuance so much understanding and um, maturity and when I found her at the start of the year I was like finally this is someone this is a voice that I can actually resonate with and I can kind of sit and listen to and be like yes okay yeah um, because I've not I've, I, I've really struggled with that on the online space just kind of like finding I guess someone that talks not someone that I agree with, because I'm not looking for someone who, you know, I'm not looking for someone to follow, I'm not looking for someone for solace, but someone who's just talking about things in a way that I think is just just better. Anyway, I'm going off onto a bit of a tangent, I don't want this to be a stream of consciousness, I literally just wanted to tell you all that I was listening to that podcast episode and it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Dean bought some maps and you're having a real having a real good study of them, aren't you? Yeah. There's... When we came back from Wales, was it literally like five no. Was it like five days after you had to go back for a stag do? Was it even less it than that? It was four days after. Okay, so four days after we drove back from Wales, you had to drive back to for a stag do yeah. and climbed another mountain. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we climbed Ooh, up here somewhere. <sighs> yeah. Dean bought some maps of Wales and Northern Scotland to kind of just, I guess, as a little memento for our two, the two road the two trips. trips. I was going to say the camper vans first two, but we didn't do Scotland in our camper van, did we? We did it in a rental. But yeah. Wales was the camper van's first. It was its maiden voyage, wasn't it? Yeah. It's and nice to see everything, like... Like, we've got the maps from, like, the first road trip we ever did in Australia. Yeah, we have. We kind of... They're nice to have. They are nice to have, because you can see where you've been on a larger scale, rather than just looking on your sat-nav. Mm. There's not many roads in Scotland, is there? No, there really isn't that many roads. Is that? Here. It's Sunday, and we're about to drive the camp van down to Dean's parents' house because it's going in for an MOT tomorrow morning. Um, the place which that we're booking it in for, the MOT for, is near Dean's parents. So we're dropping it off there. We're gonna have a roast dinner there and then Dean's mum will drive us back and then she will drive the camper van tomorrow to the test centre. Um, I'll talk about this a bit more obviously in the camper van vlog but we are anticipating that it will probably fail its MOT just based on the things that the advisories from the previous MOT which is fine like it's an old vehicle we're, fu like, we're fully aware that it's gonna have issues um, so that is kind of it for camper van. Um, I won't talk too much about it because obviously there's a separate video series but that's what we're doing.
I'm going to take her off to her first, well, not our first MOT, but our first yeah. MOT. Fingers crossed, she'll be all right. I feel like I'm sort of... She's not well, she's not been driven for a little while. No, she hasn't been driven for a while, and I do feel quite protective over it. I'm like, I feel like I'm just sending off a child into the unknown, like, good luck. Um, over the weekend, I did some serious book shopping. Um, despite the fact that I have, like, I shouldn't be doing more book shopping because the list of books that I have to read is already ridiculous, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to add to it and make it even more difficult to get through just the never ending amount of books that I would like to read. Does anyone else get just like an urge to just buy? a load of books all in one go. When I shop for books, I don't really buy just one. I tend to buy like three or four all in one go. Anyway, I um, I found a book voucher that my dad got me for Christmas last year that I thought I'd lost. I wasn't gonna say anything. And then it just reappeared in a tote bag the other day that I obviously hadn't used for a while, which is often where things go missing in bags that I then don't use for a while. Always a tote bag as well. Um, and it had quite a lot left on it. So I was like, yes. I'm gonna go and do some um, some some major book shopping, baby. And when I say major, I mean like, I bought hardbacks, you know? And I don't normally buy hardbacks because they are quite difficult to travel with and obviously they're a little bit more expensive. Um, but I had a voucher, so it didn't feel like I was spending my own money. Anyway, I'll show you the books that I bought because there's, there's many. Um, and then I'll talk about just some books that I finished recently because I did finish a few books while I was on holiday. So, first up, 4,000 Weeks, Time and How to Use It by Oliver Berkman. Bought this because I saw Africa Book talk about it. Um, I haven't ever read a sort of smart thinking psychological book before. Um, so I'm, I'm very, like, I was gonna say I'm very looking forward to this, but I'm looking forward to reading all of these. I wouldn't have picked them out if I wasn't looking forward to reading them. But I'm, I'm very intrigued by this because um, I don't have the best relationship with time time management and, and the way I think about time. So I'm very open to having my mind shifted um, and maybe sort of having a slightly better relationship with time. It also has some glowing reviews from quite interesting people um, like Darren Brown, Robert Webb, Mark Manson. Then I have Bob Mark Mortimer's autobiography and away. For me, sorry, about five, Buses just went past him. Okay. Um, Bob is like a national treasure to me. I think he's so adorable and funny. Um, Dean and I love watching Bob and Paul's uh, Gone Fishing every Sunday. It's a very nice way to end the week, a very calming, chilled, sort of visual ASMR type programme. Um, also, Bob recently did an episode of Off Menu that was really good, really funny. Um, he, ha he just has such a unique sense of humour and I have no doubt that this will be just as funny as all of his other endeavours. And look how good this bookmark is. I don't know if this is included in every book. It might be because I bought it from an independent bookshop maybe, but so good, right? Consumed by Aja Barber. This has only been out a few weeks. I struggled to find this in the bookshop because I think it's been selling so well. Um, that myself and the guy who works in the shop had to really dig around for it. Um, and we finally found the last copy. David Sedaris, A Carnival of Snackery, Diaries 2003 to 2020. This was in the new hardback section. Um, it's a hefty book. It's certainly not one that I will travel with, but I think it's going to be a great book to kind of have on the coffee table or beside my bed that I can dip in and out of because they're all quite short diary entries. So it will be easy to pick up read a couple of entries and pop down, um, especially if I don't have time to fully sit down and read a lot of pages, I think this will be a really good book. Um, Calypso was one of my favourite books from last year. I find David Sedaris extremely funny and Calypso just had me in stitches. I think I read it over the course of like four hours. It's such a good book. Um, so I imagine this will be equally as funny. And then the final book 
Wait, no, there's, there's more. This one I didn't buy. This was actually sent to me, but I wanted to include it because I think it's a really nice book. It's the Laser Baking Book from Jessica Elliott Dennison. Um, Jessica is the woman behind Elliott's, the cafe slash... Well, it started off as a cafe called Elliott's in Edinburgh, but I think it's now more of a sort of kitchen takeaway. You can go there to buy kitchen supplies and pantry supplies. Um, I mean, Lazy Baking, what more can I want? I don't like cooking i'm not particularly good at baking so this is the kind of book that i like i don't know if this comes with the book or whether she did this specifically for me but there's some little um kind of like post-it notes and she's sort of marked out some favorite recipes like for example this little note has my favorite breakfast written on it um, which i thought was a very nice touch so thank you jessica if that if you did that for me thank you very much if that is included in all the books then that's great um but I haven't actually visited Elliot's in Edinburgh. Didn't get the chance to when we were last there, but I will definitely will next time. Um, also, I think because Bake Off is now on TV, that always gets me a bit more like, oh, I want to bake something. So who knows? Maybe in a couple of weeks, you might see me in an apron baking a cake. Um, and then this one isn't hardback, but I just quickly mention it. I feel like it doesn't need to be talked about too much because lots of people have raved about this book. And um, even the guy in the bookshop was like, good choice, which is always nice, isn't it? When you get to the checkout of a bookshop and your purchases are validated with a, oh, good choice. Uh, Pyrenees Eve by Susanna Clark, which, um, yeah, so many people have raved about. Um, so I thought I'll pick it up because it was on a table. It's got so many glowing reviews. I'll give it a go. Right, after all that um, yabbering, I'm gonna go to the tailor, but maybe beforehand I'll clean this mirror. I'm going to fly through today's outfit. I'm off to London for some fun things, which I will vlog. Castle coat, it's the navy uh, trench coat that you've seen me wear many times before. Um, the blue cos vest, again, but sans t-shirt today because I think the temperatures will allow it. Um, trousers are also cos. These are really thick, quite heavy weight wool, and they're also lined. So I'm actually thinking that these will keep me warm today if it gets cold. Just do a little um, close up of the texture. Very nice. I'll talk about them maybe in more detail later on in the vlog because they've got a really good um, sort of elasticated button feature in the waistband, kind of like how kids' trousers do, that allow you to tighten them and loosen them, which is great. And I actually think all adult trousers should have this feature in. Um, GH Bass loafers again, and then Jill Sander handbag, which is part of a collaboration that I've got coming up with Farfetch at the end of the month. So I'll show you more of this handbag in that video. shooting a video that I'm doing in collaboration with Majuri, got that all edited and sent it over to them and then I started planning some content that I'm shooting in collaboration with uh, Maison Margiela, ooh, check me out. Um, yeah, a really good day. Um, and the last footage you would have seen was 
London, um, which was also really good, but it started off quite wobbly. I, I didn't have a good morning yesterday. I woke up and basically something on the internet um, triggered my anxiety and I just was lying there in bed, self-sabotaging, making it worse and worse and um, basically started to feel a bit um, like paranoid. Um, paranoia tends to trigger my agoraphobia as well. So it started feeling just quite suffocated, like I didn't really want to leave and go to London. But I knew I had to go to London because I needed to go for work stuff. Um, and yeah, it just wasn't feeling good. And I was just lying there in bed, just literally watching the minutes go by. And I was like, I need to get up. I have to get ready soon because I have to leave the house. Like I have a booked train that I have to get on. I was just lying there like in such a, just getting more and more deeper into like this hole of like anxiety and paranoia. And I was like, no, 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 I can't go. I can't go. I shouldn't go. Um, but in the end, I was like, got out of bed and I went, obviously, as you saw, um, in a bit of a rush though, unfortunately, because I did leave it so late. I'm not going to eat and talk at the same time because I know it's really annoying. Um, but actually, by the end of the day, I felt a lot better. Like, I was really wobbly when I first got to London. I went for a facial, that was lovely, um, but still was feeling quite, just didn't feel good at all. And then... As soon as I got into the Noguchi exhibition, it was like everything just went like that. And I think it was because obviously I was in a very calming exhibition and I booked the I booked the half four slot and I think the la the latest time they let people in is maybe like five or half five, so about quarter past five. The exhibition space was really empty and it was just it was so calming. I spent um, almost two hours in there. I was there until it shut, basically, until they kind of kicked me out. Um, and then I sat in one of the cafes at the Barbican and read a bit of my book until I then went for dinner with Loewe Perfumes, which was insane. Like, sometimes I don't get invited to, like, cool stuff like that very often. And then when I do, I'm a bit like, um, guys, I think you might have invited the wrong person. Like, I am not like I, it made your imposter syndrome basically and I got there and the dinner was in the conservatory and we were literally sitting under a canopy of Akari lanterns it was like I was like is this my life um and I was really really nervous because I didn't know if there was going to be anywhere that one anyone there that I knew and I'm not a massive extrovert and I find it really difficult to kind of like you know, introduce myself to people and kind of like chat to people that I don't know. Um, but luckily that there were a couple of girls there that I knew um, and the PRs who invited me were absolutely lovely and were chatting to me most of the night. Um, and by the end of the night, I felt so much better. Like, yeah, completely managed to like flip it on its head, which I was really quite, I think anyone who goes through their struggles and manages to pull themselves out, any sort of mental health struggle, and you manage to pull yourself out of it, it's quite a big thing to do that, I think, because it can be so easy to sit in those feelings. And don't get me wrong, I've had many, many days, weeks, months, where I've sat in really quite awful feelings and I've let them overpower me to the point where I don't leave the house or I don't, I don't do anything, basically. Um, and yesterday, I didn't let that happen and I got home, bear in mind, I got home at half, like, half 12 in the evening, I was absolutely knackered. I was really pleased. I was like, you know what? I persevered and I was like, I, I am going to do this. And I was just very, very, really proud of myself because a year ago, or you know, two, yeah, a year ago, two years ago, I wouldn't have been able to do that. Or e like even maybe at the beginning of this year, I wouldn't have been able to do that. I wouldn't have been able to pull myself out of that without the help of like, without loads of support basically. So to be able to do that myself, I was like, go on. Um, anyway, um, I'm actually going to London again on Friday um, for more art things. I'm going to go to Freeze with Abby and I'm really excited because A, I haven't seen Abby for about a month, maybe two months, and she's been really busy so we haven't really been like checking in with each other. We haven't like actually even t text that much for, for ages. So I'm so excited to catch up with her because I think I said before, when I do see her, it's like, me, 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 like we don't stop talking, it's just continuous. Um, 
and obviously freeze like I'm excited to go to freeze and I think it'll be a really nice way to end the week and then the studio um, we're having our kind of like autumn studio party which is gonna be great it's gonna have a pizza party it's gonna be a DJ um, so yeah I'm just really looking forward to this at the end of this week oh and tomorrow I'm going to an exhibition opening here in Norwich God, this, this week's been a really good week <laughs> And before I wrap up this week's vlog, I'm just going to show you the trousers real quick that I got back from the tailor this morning because I thought it might be interesting to see a before and after and show you what it is exactly that I've had changed on each pair of the trousers. So pair number one are the kind of straight leg tailored trousers from Co, which were far too long for me. I think I had to have about three inches taken off these. Um, as you can see, they now sit sort of just skimming the bottom of my shoes. Perfect. Um, the, the waist on them is, is quite loose and normally I would have the waist taken in at the back and have them all fit me really nicely around the waist but with this particular pair of trousers I actually want the freedom of being able to wear them high waisted and slightly lower on the waist and I also want to give myself the freedom to be able to tuck chunkier layers into the trousers because um, I've made this mistake before where I've had trousers perfectly tailored to my waist and my hips and my bum and then I've realised actually can't tuck anything into them. So I decided to leave these trousers because especially now that we're coming into autumn winter I've got so many like chunky jumpers that I want to be able to tuck in and sort of wear slightly tucked at the front. Um, and I can do that perfectly with these trousers, um, especially with this jumper because this jumper is so thick I can't really get it in many pairs of trousers. Um, I actually might wear this today you know as an outfit to the studio, I quite like this. I'm just going to be editing videos sat in the studio all day, so nice casual, comfy outfit. Right, pair number two. Okay, I'm really pleased with these. These are the um, wide leg wool trousers from COS. I think that's literally what they're called, just the wide leg wool pleated trouser. Um, and heartbreakingly, they are out of stock at the moment. Um, fingers crossed they're coming back into stock because they're a really good pair of trousers. And I'll show you why they're a really good pair of trousers in just a moment. But just to illustrate what I had changed, um, I had like about two or three inches taken off the bottom because they were really long. Um, again, I just had them taken up so that they literally just about skim the floor. Now, the beauty of these trousers, and this is um, this isn't kind of this isn't really to do with having them tailored, although this feature means that I haven't had to have them tailored, is this fantastic elastic and button system in the waistband that allows you to um, tighten and loosen the waist as much as you desire. Now I know this is a feature that's really, really common in children's clothes, but why it is not a common feature in adults' clothes, I do not know, because as someone who bloats quite a lot and just finds themselves feeling uncomfortable throughout the day, if my trousers are a little bit too tight, um, or you know, after I've eaten, or if I'm on my period, that kind of thing. I end up having pairs of trousers that I can't wear if I'm on my period, or I can't wear if I'm going out for dinner. You know, those trousers that are only used, only worn if you're feeling extra svelte or whatever. Um, and this kind of eliminates that. It means that if I, I can wear these trousers, and if I do feel a little bit uncomfortable, I can just loosen them. Or if, you know, I'm feeling svelte, I can tighten them. Um, just wondering why all pairs of trousers do not have this feature because honestly it would make life so much easier when it comes to just wearing trousers and feeling comfortable throughout the day. Anyway, um, hopefully they'll come back into stock. I feel like that's why they sold out so quickly because they have this great feature. Um, and they're also a really nice heavyweight trouser for winter time. Anyway, moving on to pair number three. Very pleased with these. I mean, I'm pleased with the results of all of them. So these trousers, these are from Aurelie. I showed them in last week's vlog, you might remember them. Um, these were just a tiny bit too long, um, just a slither too long. Um, the Usually I don't mind if my trousers kind of hit my shoe and create that slouchy effect, but because of the front crease, like how prominent the front crease is on these, it kind of looked off. 
because when the bottom of the trousers was hitting my shoe, it meant that the front crease wasn't sitting straight. It kind of had a bit of a wiggle to it and it didn't look right. So had literally a slither taken off the bottom so that they just sat a little bit higher so that the front of the trousers sits straight. And hopefully you can see that. Um, and it's just that tiny little, tiny little adjustment that can make a real difference to kind of how your trousers sit on your leg um, and how the fit looks. Very pleased with these. Um, moving on to, last but not least, pair number four. Okay, these have still got the labels on because literally as soon as I got them, I was like, nope, they need to go to the tailor. So these are from Totem. They're actually part of the next collaboration I'm doing with Farfetch, which, so you'll see much more of them in that video. Um, just to kind of give you a little, just a little preview of how they look. They're kind of like a sort of, uh, a kind of brownie green colour and they have a, I wouldn't call it a stripe, but there's sort of like a weave in the fabric that kind of creates a very natural looking striped effect. Anyway, these were far too long, as always with, I mean, that is the main reason why I have to go to a tailor, because trousers do tend to be too long. Um, and then occasionally it is tweaking uh, sort of around the, the back of my waist. Um, but yeah, these were far too long. So I had these taken up, but I've kept them quite long still because I didn't want them, like I didn't want them to be cropped because the, the, I, the model, when I looked at them on the model on the website, she was wearing them very long as well. So I was like, I want to keep them looking long. And sometimes with trousers, if you start taking off too much material on the bottom, depending on the kind of style and the cut of the trouser, it can actually look a bit odd if you're taking like a long pair of trousers to a cropped pair. Anyway, took um, a couple of inches off of these but kept them still sort of like skimming the top of my shoe. So yeah, they're the four pairs of trousers that got tailored. Um, I just, I cannot recommend enough like taking any, any sort of pair of trousers that just don't fit quite right, taking them to a tailor because it honestly feels like when you get them back that like you've just got like a brand new pair of trousers. It's really, really nice. Um, it's like some of these are trousers that I've had for a while, some, some of them are new, um, and it does seem like a bit of an effort, like gathering up everything and taking it to a tailor, but I can honestly, honestly say that when you get it back it feels 100% worth it. Right, I'm going to sign the vlog off here because I need to go to the studio and actually start putting the vlog together. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed this week's video. It felt like it was a real busy week this week. Well, last week. Um, this week is a much quieter week, which is great because it now gives me the time to film another fashion video. So the, the next video that you will most likely see uploaded is going to be another what I would wear for and then it will be 10 scenarios. So what I'm going to do is go back to that video, go through the comments and collate through the most popular suggestions. Um, if you also are watching this now and have a suggestion for that video, then please feel free to leave it below and I'll note it all down and I'll pick 10 of them. Um, I have to say, the only one I'm not going to do, and this is not because I don't want to do it, it's because I literally can't think what I would wear, is for an autumn winter wedding. And funnily enough, I have a wedding coming up. I think it's the first weekend of November. And I'm actually getting a bit worried because I can't, I haven't even, even been inspired by anything. I'm just like, I'm literally as clueless as all of you asking for help because I, I like, I don't, I mean, I haven't been to many weddings in my lifetime. I find them extremely difficult to dress for anyway, but at least in the summer, it feels a tiny bit easier. But there's something about a wedding in autumn or winter that honestly feels even more daunting. Um, so yeah, I'll, when I do figure out what I'm going to wear, I will show it in a vlog. You can come along on this journey with me because I'm going to have to start doing some sort of brainstorming in the next couple of weeks. Dean's got his suit already because he's a groomsman, so he hasn't had to think about anything whatsoever. Um, so yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyway, until then, I hope you all have a great week and I shall see you all in the next video.